Oh, wow. Well, another whinging video from Christian. <laughs> I don't even know why I come to this channel anymore. It's just such a whinge fest. This is a curveball. I'm not complaining for once. Let me just have a look at what I've written down to film. Oh, this is a... This is a whinge video. Maybe I'll make a playlist called Whinging with Christian. Well, that sounds like a new podcast. Whinging with Christian. It may come as a shock to you to learn that I'm 31 years old. Get out. You look like you're 45. You're 30. That's amazing. 31. Don't be confused. And things are happening to my body at an alarmingly fast rate that I didn't think would happen until I was 63. I sort of come to this realization that I'm quickly declining quite rapidly because now it hurts to sleep. Here, all my muscles on my shoulders and my neck just ache when I wake up because I've slept in a weird position, but I'm not, I'm just sleeping in the position that I've always slept in. But now my body can't even handle that. I have a lavender pack that I put in the microwave every morning just to sort of calm me down. And then I sit in the shower in searing hot water to try and loosen the muscles or do something to alleviate the pain that has been caused from sleeping. When you look at me, you think, wow, that's someone that leads a very sedentary lifestyle. But it's true. I spend most of my time either laying in bed or sitting at my desk. And the only movement I I get is when I walk to and from work. Oh my god, do you walk to work? That's amazing. Good for you. Yes, every day I walk to and from work. If you look out my window, you can actually see where I work. It's literally like 75 meters that way. And then when I get to work, I need like 15 minutes to recuperate from the extensive walk or what I like to call the hike to work because I have to sometimes climb one flight of stairs. When I put my shoes on, I find that when I like bend my body over, my lung capacity goes to zero. I struggle to breathe. My back starts seizing up and I've hurt my ankle because I've got to twist my foot to get it into the shoe and be able to reach the laces. So then my ankle starts throbbing for maybe two or three hours and I'm doing a bit of a limp just from putting on the shoe, Not nothing else. Not from the hike to work, no, just from the simple act of putting on the shoe does my ankle seize. The other day for work, I had to run to the newsagent and get a magazine. Now, because I work in radio and it's live, I had to run back to the studio to hand this magazine over. And I have never, ever run, ever. It's like, I don't run. And I had to run. I was made, I was forced by my producer, Caitlin, thank you, to run. Because this was such an anomaly and I wanted to prove the fact that I did run, I filmed this little video. Never run for every, anyone in my life. I'm going to die. When I showed Caitlin that video, she said, Is that you running or is that a brisk walk? That was me at full pelt. I had to run about 200 metres. By the time I got to the studio, I was struggling to breathe. And I didn't want like my team to know like how close to death I was. So I handed the magazine, was like, just going to pop outside. And then I like hurtled over a table and was like, <gasps> To look at me, you'd think I was like some superior swimmer that's just spent five and a half minutes underwater trying to see how deep I can go. And then you come back up and you're like, just <gasps> just like grass with any air, just get in my lungs, air, get in my lungs. Don't know if it's an age thing, but I struggle to sleep. Like I just lie there and my brain just goes, you should join a gym. Why don't you think about exercising? And then I go, yeah, I'm gonna exercise and be fit. And it's easy to think about it because like, I'll just think about myself on a treadmill or on like an elliptical machine. But then when it comes time to actually doing it, oh my Lord, no, thank you. So my brain goes over all these things I can do to stop feeling like I'm a total failure as a human. And then it's morning time and I haven't had any sleep. But when I went for my 200 meter run, I never had a better sleep in my life because my body thought I'd done a marathon. It doesn't realize that 200 meters is a very small distance. But in the brain of Christian Hull, 200 meters is like from here to Tokyo. It felt like I ran from Melbourne to Tokyo. Oh, I had such a good sleep. I haven't had that good of a sleep for so long. And then I was like, maybe I just run for 200 meters each day. <laughs> That's not happening. And then someone said, why don't you just walk? I'm like, I do. I walk every day to and from work. And it is the hardest thing. 
it's like my, oh, it's just so difficult. And another thing, I always seem to just be, oh, I permanently seem to be sick. I always have a cough. I don't know what it is or what's in my lungs, but I'm always like, <coughs> do they just fill with liquid when you get older? And you're just slowly clearing all the age fluid. And you know, you get to a point where you've got to really just stop taking Nurofen because like, Nurofen isn't there to keep you alive. It's to like alleviate a headache or a small ache. But when your body permanently aches, you're just permanently taking Nurofen. And a friend of mine said, well, what do you want in life? Do you want to feel sore? Or do you want to just feel sore every so often? I was like, what do you mean? And she said, well, Nurofen will cause a stomach ulcer. But in the scheme of things, is a stomach ulcer more painful than a full body ache? And the answer is yes you don't want a stomach ulcer. I've also noticed my eyes take like a long time to adjust. Like I'll wake up in the morning and look at my phone and my phone is so blurry. And you're sort of doing this, putting some moisture into your eyes, like that's gonna help. And then you're like, I can't read that. And then you bring it close and you're like, oh, I can just make that. And then you hold it further away. And you're like, oh, I can see it better now that it's further away. And then I refuse to believe that I need glasses. So I'm just like, oh no, just, it's just my eyes waking up. And then it gets to midday and you're like, okay, up you get. Come on, wakey, wakey. I need to be able to read things. The greys. They come and go as they please. Sometimes I wake up and I look in the mirror and there's just a patch of grey hair. Other times it's not even there. Where the hell does it go? And why is it just coming and going? And another thing is the greys in places that shouldn't be. It's really upsetting. Like, it's really upsetting. I don't want to talk about it. And on the rare occasion I do walk to McDonald's or walk somewhere to get food, because why else would you walk anywhere? I always think my phone is vibrating in my pocket. Oh, someone's calling me. And then I'm like, oh, that's not my phone. And then I put it back in my pocket and then I go for another walk. Oh my God, my phone's vibrating. I'm like, no, it's not my phone. I'm like, where is that vibration coming from? And I keep walking and I go, oh, that vibration's coming from my knees. That's concerning. I've also noticed that every time I move, bend over, sit down, or do anything, I make a noise. It's like my body preparing me to lift 400 kilos at the Olympics, you know. Or you know when the tennis people, you know, but they're actually performing some sort of athletic achievement. I am simply lifting myself out of a chair, which when you look at really, it sort of is, like an Olympic achievement, if I can get out of the chair. If I drop my phone on the ground, this is the noise I make. It sounds like I'm going to the toilet. No, I'm simply moving my spine. You can't make that noise if you're in public. So if you're sitting in a waiting room or you're at a cafe and you go to get up, you have to like internalize that noise. So you sort of like, Or you talk through it like, how's it going over there? I don't know why, but as you scream, it just sort of helps you get up. I think it's because it's just so painful. Your hips, your knees, your back, everything is working on overdrive just to stand your body up. And the worst is when you do go to a place and they're so hipster, they have chairs that don't have lower lumbar support, i.e. stools. If I see a stool, I can sit in a stool maybe five to seven minutes maximum before my back just starts like pulsating with pain. And then if you're with friends, which really I never am, you sort of, you just sit through it and then you, you go to the toilet a lot, um, you know, because you need to stand up and you're just sort of like, oh, I'm just gonna go to the toilet. The beauty about that is you're not lying. You do need to go to the toilet a lot because, you know, things, things don't hold. This is, everything gets a bit loose as you get older. So, oh, I have to go to the toilet or it'll just come out of me. So for anyone under the ages of 31, good luck. And a lot of people who are in their 40s that watch my videos tell me it gets worse. So I can't wait to make a video like this every year about how life sucks and my body is giving out. <laughs> oh, shit.